Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that updated hurricane season forecast. We're going to go over everything, including some data on an actual storm that we've already had. So we've officially had Tropical Cyclone Anna. So for today's comment of the day, I want to know when do you think we will have our next Tropical Cyclone tropical storm or hurricane bill hopefully not hurricane this early let me know in the comments down below and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video let's get straight into this video and first things first we're taking a look at that post tropical cyclone anna now and as you can see that one should fizzle out by this morning as i'm making this video uh it should be fizzled out by about 8 a.m or so it should be a you know post tropical cyclone and pretty much be all said and done now, I've been doing this for every single hurricane season update video, uh, and here's our hurricane season regions. So this is basically the major regions you would you would see me mention here. Uh, first off, OTS stands for out to sea, so that would be any region that's basically out to sea. Uh, we have our main development region, the MDR for short. I usually would refer to this as an MDR, but sometimes I say main development region too. We have our Caribbean, which should be obvious, the Gulf of Mexico, which should be obvious, and then the East Coast, which should also be obvious. Uh, so those three should be quite easy. Now, let's just move right into those sea surface temperature anomalies. Uh, and this is going to be huge because tropical storms and hurricanes develop much more easily in warmer water temperatures rather than colder water temperatures. Uh, so they, they need a certain temperature to thrive. Uh, and if you have above average sea surface temperatures, it's even more good for tropical cyclones. Uh, so the warmer, the better. So when you have these above average sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, that's a really, really bad combo there. Uh, and as you can see, that is the combo that we have even surrounding regions around Cuba, the Bahamas, the East Coast. These are all at least slightly above average sea surface temperatures. Now, as you can see, we have a second shade of that actually for portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Also, regions surrounding the southeast coast there around Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina as well there. Now, we actually have another region of above normal sea surface temperatures as well, and that should be our main development region. We are a little bit colder by the time I'm making this video, but we saw this last year as well where it kind of cooled down and then it really ramped up uh, towards the very end. I do expect that to occur. That has happened most years recently, and I don't expect that streak to really end here. We're slightly below normal right now, but I think it will make a comeback. If not, I will be updating this if it seems like that's not going to be the case. But we do have slightly above average sea surface temperatures expected, according to me, at this point uh, for the main development region, or MDR for short, like I said. And we even have a, mar uh, a more moderately above average sea surface temperature region as well here, uh, kind of in the middle there. I do expect that this will get quite warm as we approach the heart of the hurricane season. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the below normal sea surface temperature anomalies. We're going to talk about the wind shear, the development, uh, and then the overall forecast, and then the amount of storms forecast as well. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the below average sea surface temperature anomalies. And as you can see, one of those is going to be south of Jamaica. I've been talking about this all year. I do expect that area to be not quite as favorable as most other regions uh, in the Atlantic here. Uh, and then we also have another one there northeast of Bermuda. I expect there to be a blob of some colder than normal sea surface temperatures. This does have implications because some storms, or some, sometimes we do see storms develop in here. Uh, or, or we see them strengthen in there. Uh, either way, uh, that is going to be an area that does have some implications, not really for land impacts, but mostly just for the amount of storms we see by time we reach the end of the hurricane season. That is an area that we do typically see a lot of storms develop, actually a surprising amount from what you would actually think. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that wind shear forecast. And we do expect to be mostly in a La Nina this year and then even next year. So... That usually would lead you to believe that there will be below average wind shear when there's a La Nina. If there's an El Nino, you would expect that there's a good chance that you're going to have above average wind shear. Why does this matter at all? Well, the wind shear will take the tops off of hurricanes and tropical storms, literally. Um, it will destroy a storm. If there's no wind shear, it will let the storm just freely develop, basically, to whatever it's going to be without interfering with it. But if there is a lot of shear, it can completely 
destroy a storm. And we see that oftentimes, actually, when they move south of Dominican Republic and Haiti and south of Cuba, uh, that area tends to have a little bit more wind shear sometimes. And if that is the case, it can literally destroy storms as they move into that region uh, pretty frequently, actually. You'd be quite surprised. Now, here is our development forecast. So just literally going right ba back off of what I was just saying, below average development here south of Dominican Republic, south of Haiti. Uh, the wind shear tends to be a little bit higher in this region, and then also we're expecting below average sea surface temperature anomalies. Those two things combined is pretty clear that I expect below average development for this region. Um, that's obvious. Now, we also have a slightly above average development region here for the Caribbean and then also up the, up the east coast there as well. Uh, this is where storms should be able to move into here and then have a quite easy time developing. Not like crazy or anything, but they should have a pretty easy time developing in this region. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on with the rest of this development forecast. And then we're going to move on and take a look at our overall forecast as well. And then the amount of storms forecast at the very end as well. So all of those things are coming up in just a moment. Now here is our golf forecast. And as you can see, we're expecting above average development. So more than the slightly above average area. Uh, obviously, they already have a very easy time developing in the golf. And by the time we're reaching August, September, usually storms do the best in the golf out of anywhere. Um, but I think they're gonna have. It's gonna be even more of a differential there. I think the golf is gonna be even better than normal for development, uh, which is kind of scary because it already is very great for development. But you know, I think it's gonna be even better. Now the MDR is kind of a wild card. If we do have the below average wind shear, like I'm expecting, and the above average sea surface temperatures, we should have very good development here uh, in this MDR region. But if that shear is a little bit higher than I'm anticipating, I think it could be kind of average, okay? So we would have more shear, uh, but also higher sea surface temperatures. That would pretty much even out in my head. Uh, we'd pretty much be dealing with an, a near normal MDR region as far as the amount of storms that we get coming out of there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our overall hurricane season forecast. This one hasn't changed at all, actually, so I'm just going to go through it. You might have seen this already, but... Not as favorable in the southern Caribbean there, south of Jamaica, south of Dominican Republic, south of Cuba, uh, not as favorable. Below average sea surface temperatures, high amounts of shear like always, uh, not going to be very good for tropical development. Now the MDR shear will dictate everything like I said, but I do expect below average shear at this point in time. So I think that should be an above average development area like I've mentioned multiple times within this video. Above average activity in that red region, which is most of our Caribbean region, I expect storms to have a quite easy time developing in there, but not as easy as they will have in the Gulf, which is the highest risk and best chance of tropical activity. I think this will be a big Gulf year like we've been having mostly for the most part over the past, I don't know, five or ten seasons. It's been just the Gulf will have rapid intensification year with these tropical storms. Uh, it's very wild. Speaking of wild, our wild card along the East Coast, this is going to be a region where... It really is dictated mostly by the steering pattern and if storms can make their way up the coast or not. Because a year like last year, we saw many storms, especially early in the season, make their way up the east coast. And it was very crazy. Uh, or you could see a steering pattern that doesn't really allow for any storms to come up the east coast. Either way, I, I think it's going to be a big hurricane season. Here's our amount of storms forecast. And as you can see, we're expecting 14 to 20 named storms, which is above average. 7 to 11 hurricanes, which is above average, and then major hurricanes 3 to 6, which is also above average. So overall, we're just expecting an above average hurricane season this upcoming hurricane season. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6, which is the maximum we can go for a long-range forecast. I've mentioned this multiple times. I'll never go higher than a 4 for a long-range forecast. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys... Uh, what, how, how did the spring go, basically, in your opinion? And James Marr said, it's been decent. The weather has been all over the place. So I'm hoping these flip-flop patterns come to an end. And I can't agree anymore. Uh, it really just bothers with my allergies and also my sinuses. And I'm ready for that to pretty much end. 
Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this awesome patron ad screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Terraforms1, alongside Catbite as well. If you'd like to join this one, it'll be next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.